Nora, what is, what is the state of research and data and evidence that could, that could support more work, more programs? It's, right, now it's very limited uh, right now it's very limited because research and funding of research has not been a priority. So when you go to any of the big funders or the smaller funders and you ask for funding just to get basic numbers uh, of uh, the numbers affected or infected, um, who's, what, what works, what doesn't in terms of outreach services, it's again like all other disability, uh, issues on the bottom of everybody's priority list. And especially in the global AIDS world, despite the fact that there's lots of work and lots of, of um, funding out there, not enough perhaps, but more than, certainly more than we see in the disability component of this, it's just not been put on anybody's priority list and therefore you're always begging for crumbs when people are being funded for huge projects that um, don't have a disability component. And that's another issue that I think is very important I sh should stress. There's two tracks here. One is to fund specific work on disability issues. And the other, just as importantly, is to make a dis or put a disability component in all the projects that are currently ongoing. Just as we have a gender, uh, um, a, a gender and age and um, other components for vulnerable populations. If you, what we need is a disability component. If you're doing a big multi-country study, if you're doing a small outreach effort, whatever it is, work with uh, disability groups, work with those of us who do research in this area, put a disability component in what you're doing now. It's, it, we couldn't be in more need of data and we couldn't have less data right now and it, it shouldn't be. Do we have anyone else in the audience who wants to get in on this conversation about begging for crumbs in the, in the research and the, and the funding? I'm going to come to you in a sec. I'll get the mic, no problem. Oh, okay. Um, I just want to speak on behalf of Liverpool Visity. My name is Nduku Kilonzo. And uh, when we wanted to do something on sexual violence and HIV AIDS in Kenya, uh, with, among people with disabilities, we eventually had to get money off bits and pieces of uh, co-funding that Liverpool VCT has because for a year we had been unable to raise uh, about $120,000 to be able to do a big study. So we ended up doing a small assessment that cost us 20000 which was what we could afford internally. It sounds like this is a huge uh, opportunity for funders to find an urgent, urgent place where so much work can be done so quickly. Just a thought. Well, it's funny that you come to me because um, my name's Kate Harris and I work for Comic Relief, which is a funding agency. What do you know? <laughs> Our new best um, friend. And I, I'd like to sort of make a confession, but also make a su suggestion. The first confession is that when I worked for an NGO before Comic Relief, it was an HIV-focused NGO. And the disability uh, movement came to us with suggestions for connections to make between HIV and disability. And we didn't respond well. And I think part of the reason was because we didn't know who should handle it. We had within our um, organization somebody focused on children, women, treatment, prevention. Who was going to handle the disability question? Who's, whose remit was it? And because we didn't know, it kind of fell in the cracks. And what I'm thinking now is we do, we do now, in, in that previous organization I worked for, have an, a human rights person. And I actually think that actually that's the person who, who could take that remit. But then the suggestion is, the, the, the way to solve this is this point about ma mainstreaming. And I think it's Nora's point about mainstreaming in the same way that we've mainstreamed gender. And one of the things that Comic Relief does already is it mainstreams disability. So whenever we're talking about funding on any issue, we'll always ask, how are people with disability included in that? And how are women going to benefit too? And it is no surprise that you're one of our key funders for this event. Thank you. Someone else? I'll be very brief. From the African context, disabled people in the beginning were being killed in families because they were a case to a family. Secondly, they were being put aside, hidden, that other family members cannot see them or the community. Later on, people said no. Now these people, I think they are like us, they can breathe. Can we put them in institutions? That's when the CBR programs came in. 
Then after that, we said, no, we don't want to be in institutions. We want to be like any other person. Can you allow us to actually integrate into a larger community? We are now in the community where we are now. And when we are in a community, whatever is affecting the community, it affects us. Be HIV and AIDS, be lack of education, whatever affects any living person, it affects us as well. Coming to people with uh, HIV and AIDS, those who have chronically uh, uh, illnesses and they become disabled people. If I recall, this year in March, when we had a campaign conference in Uganda, we did uh, uh, prepare a declaration whereby we are saying, as a disability movement, we are accepting people, those with HIV and AIDS and they become disabled, to be part of the movement. Now, having said that, there is much that has been talk, talked about regarding human rights and disability. Now we are saying the issue of HIV AIDS has come on board. There is no evidence that we can have now and sell to the donor community that this is what we really want. All what you have heard here, sometimes it can be hearsay. But the reality is that we need more evidence to research to be done in this area before you all come on board completely. Help us in coming up with evidence in what we are saying. Because most of you here, still more, you may not actually agree with us to what we are saying. But what has been said here by my colleagues is the truth. But what we want to do is, we want to come to you to say, look, we want your money because we have got ABCD that we can give you as a evidence. To say, once you give us your money, we are going to do ABCD. And here, after, after some time, after evaluation, we'll be saying, this is what we have done. Where we have gone wrong, you correct us. So, as people with disabilities, we want to work as one group, and we should not be divided at all. Let us speak with one group, with one language, one, one, one mind, and indeed, let us go out there and present evidence to whoever wants to support us. Thank you. Thank you. I've, uh, I've rarely heard such passion on the subject of research. <laughs> it's quite exciting. Um, Nora, I know you wanna, I want you to jump in, but also to help me understand this. What do you think the priority is? Because we've heard clarion calls for more evidence to yeah. support more funding. So what needs to be done first? Help focus. You, you're familiar better than anyone Two with what's areas. been done. Um, and to say there's absolutely no uh, numbers is a little, uh, there are small studies. And the small studies clearly show that people with disabilities are at equal to twice the risk of becoming HIV positive. But we need larger scale studies to discuss disability in the same ballpark as, uh, as all other groups are now being discussed with the global AIDS community. So we need larger scale studies um, to, to take what we, we now suspect and make it, uh, in, in terms of epidemiology, a, um, enough of a, of a critical mass of studies so that we can not only understand how many are affected, but to better target programs for these for these populations. And we need more research on best practices. What works? So how many people are there and what works? Again, this is very basic research we're, we're talking about. And I think those are the two main areas. And they're also the main areas that I think the AIDS community is working in. We're gonna stay with the panel for a minute. Um, Shanali, I know you want in, Rachel. Mm -hmm. And yet, yet never, Shana, I haven't forgotten about you. As much as I would agree with the importance of uh, coming up with a research to, to get the real figures of how many p people with disabilities are infected. But I, I'm a little bit concerned here because when you are dealing with this research, it takes a time and it's a process. And in that process, you find that people with disabilities will be dying. So what I would suggest here is, as much as we'll be look, uh, coming up with programs on the research, but still we need inclusion of persons with disabilities in the already programs which are already there. They need to be included in the health services. They have to be there. I have an example where I've lost so many friends of mine, persons with disabilities, who have died silently because they couldn't access medical services. So if we wait for the research program to take place, I'm sure the 650 million will be, will be dead by then. But we need to 
these two to work together. They need to go in parallel uh, at the same time. Those, those can be scary words. We need to study the problem more, right? That we need to, that, I, surely a moral case can be made instantly on the basis of, the, of, this, of this surfacing moment when people like our physician friend in the back row, just someone turns on the light, all of a sudden there's a tremendous urgency for action that doesn't need to be justified by numbers right away. It doesn't mean you can't keep doing the study, right? Shernali and Nora, go ahead. Um, no, I would be the last person in the world to say wait and, and withhold services till we get all the numbers. Your question was about research. Yeah. Let me also say in terms of funding and just outreach, I know not one but probably 80, 100, 200 small um, or uh, national or, or local um, disabled people's organizations that have gone and asked for money for the just very the most basic of services to pay for transportation mm. to bring people back and forth for for um, for meetings uh, distribute condoms to their membership and they've often gone to AIDS organizations not once but five ten fifteen times begging for again crumbs and they're turned away so in terms of funding and uh, we need funding for these um, for these uh, organizations and we need inclusion of people with disabilities in every outreach um, effort that's now going on. And that's where a lot of the funding should go. Mm -hmm. Again, if you run any AIDS outreach effort and one out of 10 people or 10% of the people you serve are not disabled, then I'd ask you to ask yourself, where are they and why aren't we reaching them? Yetna Bursch is gonna implode if she doesn't get to talk and then Shanali and then Matilda, go ahead. Go, go. Well, I, I just, I'm going to build on what already Nora said, and I'm going to put it in a more mathematical manner. We have said that there are almost, in every world, at least 10% of each population are persons with disabilities. So I if I had been a funder, in every project I have, in the reporting as well as the planning, if I don't see person with disabilities, I will say minus a, minus 10. You have to always deduct 10 if person with disabilities are not included. It's negative Decline billing. their sexes. Yeah, negative 10. Say the minus 10. If, if they say, okay, I will be addressing 50% of the population, okay, out of the 50, at least 40 will be non-disabled, and the 10% should be person with disabilities. So say the minus 10 whenever they give you their report. They have to do it. It's a rights-based. I mean, uh, Matilda was saying it the, the previously that there is a convention on the ground. But, I mean, it's, I want to ring another bell also for those of you who has, who, who, who looked sleeping safely for not ratifying the convention. All the international human rights instruments, starting from the oldest universal declaration of human rights, are workable for persons with disabilities. So not ratifying the convention cannot be a way out. It can never be exit. SEDA works for women with disabilities. The Child Rights Convention works for the children with disabilities. So no exit at all. All human rights instruments work for persons with disabilities. So it's a rights based, it's mandatory. You should say minus 10. Otherwise, the door is open and the, thief are, the thieves are allowed to get in. And they're running away with 10% of the money. Shonelli. Yeah, I just I want to add to all of that. I think this is a moment to really call the AIDS community to task. Um, so, yes, we should call for specific research on people with disabilities. Many women in Uganda said. Uh, women are on lifetime medications for mental illness, yet no one's looked at the interaction between those drugs and ARVs. There's very specific things that need to be looked at that I think are basically a violation of human rights until they're addressed. But in addition, the AIDS community is large, it has funding, it has structures in place. The UN AIDS report comes out every year. It analyzes in depth, it takes an in-depth look at high risk, other high risk populations. So it looks at sex workers, it looks at injection drug users. People with disabilities are the largest vulnerable group. I did a search of the recent UN AIDS report. It's 324 pages and the word disabilities is nowhere in it. So we have these groups doing this reporting this investigation and they're, it's, they're not there at all and I think it's a real moment to call them to task that they have to start to address this population. We're, we're at the point in the conversation where now everybody's ready. I could say where were you at the beginning, but that's okay. I'm just gonna say as, as we hurtle towards the end of our time, if we can keep our comments twice as passionate and half as long, then we'll, we'll all get a chance. Right now Matilda's been yes. waiting, then Washington, well, then I'm going back to the audience. Uh, uh, right into the mic, all right? Many things have been said up to the point. It's uh, really overwhelming to, to listen. 
and I think, well, mainstreaming, research, data. Uh, but there's one thing that uh, really, I think it's a, a question to make. The maturity and the, the long way that has been gone on civil society, society uh, NGOs of uh, people with AIDS, it's uh, very uh, ahead of what's going on with civil society and NGOs with people with disability if the, the issue is also invisibility. So that's another point to catch up with, I think. Thank you. Washington. I think much has been mentioned by my colleagues, and I do believe that uh, one of the things that is also really going to support us is documentation. How able are we to document? Just as uh, Enabesh was mentioning it out, how able can we learn from one another? And even as we do the monitoring and evaluation of those reports, what can we replicate from the different countries, from the different programs? I think disability is not a complicated issue. There is nothing complicated. As long as you don't involve us, it will appear complicated. But when you involve us as stakeholders, as people who've done it before, organizations that have done it before, learn from them. How able are we to document our work and even like be able to build on that? Because I think even if we document, it will even inform a second phase of funding that will be able to carry forward what had already been implemented. I think people with disabilities, will not really have access as long as we are not really put into the existing programs. Because we cannot have universal access, I still say, without the inclusion of people with disabilities. Luis, I'm headed back into the audience. Here we go. I'm going to concentrate for the moment on people who haven't spoken yet, and then I'll get to the second round of people who are ready to get back in. Go ahead. My name is Nyara Zai. I'm the General Secretary with the World YWCA and we sit in the organizing committee of this big conference and would we'll be preparing for the Vienna conference. First, congratulations for whoever supported this panel. I'll carry the passion as we sit in that meeting and we'll push within the preparations for Vienna. This is unacceptable. It's really unacceptable for us to exclude and not have this visibility and um, we will do our best. We sit on that, on, that, on that seat representing women, young people, and people of faith. Therefore, this for me is a personal commitment as I sit on that seat to support the issues that have been raised this evening. Secondly, the issue of young people with disabilities who become sexual experimentation within our communities is a very, very serious issue of vulnerability of young people especially from Africa. I think my colleagues have spoken from Africa on really, at times we close our, our kids in their homes and especially young women with mental health problems who we find pregnant, positive with an STI, with no access to services, facing stigma, this is an issue which we also need the disability movement to empower organizations like the YWCA. We are present in 125 countries, but we don't have the skills to work with disability issues. And we really need to reach out to the disability community to empower us to have the skills, the knowledge, the language, the sensitivity, and the flexibility to understand and to listen. And lastly, it's about my son. When we went to the ophthalmologist and he said, young man, um, your, your eyesight is getting a little bit low, so let's, let's continue to monitor and we, we never know. Uh, you may lose your eyesight, but now, you know. So we came out, I was so devastated with my 15-year-old boy, and he just asked me one question. He says, mommy, if really I, I lose my eyesight, will I be able to kiss? And immediately, I knew that the issue of young people, sexuality, love, the, the issue of will I be loved? If you are not there, is there somebody to care for me? Is there somebody who would understand? Is there somebody who would not judge and discriminate? 
and really this afternoon and this evening have been so powerful for me as a, as a parent, but also as a leader. And um, congratulations to all men and women with disability for your courage. Thank you very much. Thank you.